Alright, Shalom, before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakak Rash, the honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, walk within, learning, and teaching in truth and sincerity. Alright, and this is going to be another video through the Spirit. Uh, and now, you know, yesterday we were just going in, you know, with the lesson, so I'm going to be grabbing this. Uh, basically, this is going to be, this lesson is going to be based off of uh, yesterday's camp. You know, the brother, uh, one of the brothers you call, he was breaking down, dealing with uh, how in the scriptures, many times, the, the Holy Spirit is compared unto water, or it's compared unto wind. You know, it's called the, the breath of life. And dealing with the fact that, uh, basically, how in, t in, in today's time, these people, they're not used to supernatural and spiritual things, but back then it was more regular. All right. You, you, it was a, it wasn't a, a super, you know, you know, there's time, you know, men, men of the Lord were scared, but men of the Lord, you know, seen angels back then people used to see miracles. And so now the heavenly father, what he's done, he's pulled back on, uh, supernatural and apparitions and miracles to the point to where now many people don't have faith. So he's pulled back. Uh, on purpose, you know, not because the Heavenly Father can't do anything, but he's pulled back so that now in these days and times, the elect is going to require more faith. Because if we, you know, we're seeing things happen on a regular basis, like how they have happened in the ancient world, there would be no point to, you know, oh, yeah, the UFOs is chariots. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, shit, we just seen an angel hop out the mug yesterday. You know, it, it wouldn't be no big deal. We'd be used to seeing, uh, donkeys talk, you know, or seeing, uh, you know, when you read through the scriptures, many of the supernatural and strange things that happen, people in this world aren't used to. So when those things return, they're so carnal that they're not going to have any faith and they're not going to be able to believe. But since we've been reading about it, praying about it and studying about it, we'll be able to believe. All right. So I'm going to start with this in John chapter five and verse one, it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Yahweh Shai went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, it says, like it, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. So you had a pool of water called Bethsaida, which in these assholes, they know that where there's lights, there's a gaming company called, uh, or what, uh, uh, Bethesda, Slaki, I said Bethsaida, it's Bethesda. There's a gaming company that named themselves Bethesda, all right, assholes, but... Uh, so it was a pool of water said so it had five porches, you know, basically five, uh, you know, like at a pool, you got the little steps you can come in at, you know, so it said it had five of them, five different, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, five different, uh, basically sets of steps you can come in at. So verse three, it says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting, the moving of the water so you had people who were many people who were physically di disabled that waited upon uh that waited upon the water all right and it's gonna go on to explain in the next verse so they would sit around you know motherfuckers blind motherfuckers can't walk motherfuckers can't talk you know all types of ailments and issues verse four for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water whosoever then first the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had so an angel would come and hit the water when everyone with the issue of the body or mind would see the water move everyone would rush up in there and whoever landed up in there first would be the one that was healed all right and so i'm bringing this out to show you that supernatural things were a natural occurrence in the ancient world and these people knew of this opportunity and they would hop on it you know so I, and, and now in 2020 just imagine, you know, what would people be doing if, you know, if they knew that there was a magic pool somewhere that would heal you? These fucking assholes wouldn't have any faith. These assholes would not believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in the absolute slightest. That's why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai withdrew uh, things like that from happening. He's not dealing with this world and with these people on that level. All right, these people are way too uh, wicked. You know, you'll have Ray Ray, he didn't just got into a shootout. You know, he man, nigga, get the nigga, get to the dust, nigga. I'm <laughs> nigga, get over there. You know, they <laughs> cutting through traffic because this nigga just got hit ten times. 
And then after he's healed, he's not going to turn his life to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. He's going to go return right back to that bullshit. All right. So in the ancient world, hey, you know, to a certain degree, especially our people, since they knew who they were, they had more faith. So the Heavenly Father had more things like this going down in the world. But now in today's time, the Heavenly Father pulled all that way. So now it requires even more faith to believe, y'all, because we haven't seen no magic killing waters. All right, we haven't seen, uh, you know, brothers have their testimonies, close calls with death, you know, uh, angel experiences, crazy dreams, but we haven't experienced miracles, disasters, and uh, just supernatural events to the level that men in the ancient world did. All right, let's get another example. Man, angels straight up appeared and disappeared in front of people. When you go to uh, Salakia, now this is going to be Judges chapter 6. Now this is dealing with uh, let's see, Salakia. This is going to be dealing with oh no, okay, this is one example but actually we'll get another one. Let's go to let's go to Manoah. Alright, you had the father of Samson. Uh, you had uh, him and his wife. Basically they had an experience with an angel all right. All right. So this is going to be Judges chapter thirteen. All right. I'm just get you know I may get another example, and then I'll just get the fact that how we have to have faith in these faithless times, especially when these miracles start happening, y'all. You know because hey, we talk about it, we read about it, but when these things actually start happening, hey, we gotta have faith and remember that we've been reading about it because these people are gonna bug out, y'all. When they see dark-skinned men with armor on, with a sword slicing over buildings doing impossible feats of strength their mind their former reality is going to shatter before them so a lot of people are just going to stand and die a lot of people are just going to drop stand dead you know not going to be able to comprehend and deal with what is happening before them but we can't be like them all right judges chapter 13 and 19 it says so manoah which was the father of samson took a kid meaning a goat with the meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. So he set up, you know, the sacrifice to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. The angel had, uh, was sent to them to tell them that they were going to give birth to a son. You know, Samson, you know, don't cut his, uh, don't cut the locks of his head. You know, he was uh, basically the Nazarite vow, you know, from, from birth. All right, verse 20 says, And it came to pass, when the flame went upward, went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in heaven in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. So here it is, you know, originally, oh yeah, uh, they didn't realize at first that this was an angel. You know, Manoah's wife came to him and was like, hey, this man the other day came and said, you know, come do this. He was talking to me. He said, I'm going to have a kid. You know, so they're probably thinking he's just a prophet <clears throat> or a holy man. And here it is, the flame going. He just leaps into the fire. The fire ascends into heaven. You know, so they, they was like, oh, shit, angel. They bowed down to the ground. Verse 21, it says, but the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew, Slaki, then Manoah knew uh, that he was an angel of the Lord. Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen the most high power. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would we neither would he have showed us these things, nor would at this time have told us such things as these. So he started, hey, the husband started bucking. He's like, oh shit. You know, the Heavenly Father is about to destroy us. You know, we've seen one of his holy angels, you know, and his wife. Hey, and that's what a real woman would do. Just a little side note. You know, even if a, a wife is a husband to, and not calling this man stupid, but if a wife is a husband to a man of lesser knowledge, it's her job to comfort him. If you know your man, you know, at a 1 to 10 intelligence scale is at like a 4, you're still supposed to be there for your 4 man. <laughs> All right? No matter how stupid he is, he, he takes care of you. He would you. He's just holding you down. And, you know, so she showed a good example of, of wifelyhood by comforting her man, you know, but so basically the angel was there and it disappeared right before them, which if that were to happen in today's time, y'all, bro, a motherfucker would just bug them 
if he was about to bug out back then, a dude right now in today's time couldn't handle that. Because this world doesn't have faith. And that's why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't do these things unto them. Matter of fact, let's do this, let's look this up. That's why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai doesn't give these people miracles. They seek after a sign. It says a wicked generation seeketh after a sign. And if these assholes were shown the, sh shown the sign, they wouldn't even believe it. All right? They don't believe us when we're out there on the highways and byways. They don't believe our videos, so that's how we know they wouldn't believe. We'd be out here teleporting, healing cancers, patients, all right, stopping car accidents, reviving babies, all right, uh, 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 stopping bullets from hitting people, you know, healing niggas. People, ah, oh, nigga, ah, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all still preach hate, you know, all that BS. Here, this is one of the ones I wanted. Matthew chapter 11, we'll start at verse uh, 21. It says, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. This is what I was thinking about earlier. It says, For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon at the day of judgment than for you. So, hey, the Lord's saying, Look, if I'd have went to some heathens and did these things, they would have listened. All right, that's in the book of Jeremiah. If the Heavenly Father would have told the heathens that they're the chosen people, they'd have been like, oh, shit, cool, Lord. You know, oh, what are we doing? Oh, we, oh, you just want us to keep uh, the Sabbath? Oh, okay, you just want us to, you know, worship you only? You know, the heathen would have did it because they know they don't have a power. So that's why the judgment is going to be so much more hardcore, you know, to an extent for the wicked of our people. All right, verse 23, it says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell for if the mighty works which have been done in thee been done in Sodom and Sodom it would have remained until this day so the Lord even went so far as to say and we understand you know Sodom and Gomorrah was wicked it wasn't going to remain but this is how pissed off uh, our Lord and Savior how shy was you know he was acknowledging them Sodom and Gomorrah was wicked as all hell but even if I would have went and spoken unto them they would have repented but our people don't want to repent. And so that's why we don't have the pool of Bethesda anymore. That's why we don't have uh, all these super miracles happening. Because these people don't believe. Alright, so it's for us, the hopeful elect, the hopeful one third. When these miracles return, y'all, we do have to believe. When we do see the angels, when we do see the chariots, when we do see brothers getting up from damage that kills a man. When we do see brothers healing people, alright, or food appearing before you in miraculous situations we have to believe y'all hey we, we have to believe in yahweh bashim yahweh shai when the supernatural returns all right because right now the supernatural has been pulled from this world to a degree and these people don't believe but we can't hey let's like this we forget the scripture we can't be it be like these people hey right here here's one timothy 4 and 10 it says for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living power who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe, y'all. So we have to believe. Hey, what's it tell you? Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 4 and 13. Let me double check. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's either 1st or, uh, you know, it's 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Let's lock it. Oh, no, it's actually 2 Corinthians. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. All right, we also have in the same faith, according as it is written, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. All right, so we have to believe in these things that are coming. We have to have that faith. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And that, this, you know, may end up being the last one. We'll see. Just a real quick, uh, you know, a hey, we have to believe in the supernatural when it, when it returns. We can't be like those that disbelieve. All right, uh, Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right, so we got to have that faith just because we haven't seen these events in a long while. All right, verse 6, it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to the most high power must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right, calm, perfect. You know, so we have to believe that 
all these words that were written aforetime for our learning are true, all right? And so when these things start happening in the world, y'all, and that's basically the whole point of this video, it all ties into faith as well. That's why the Heavenly Father stopped fucking with us. We stopped, we stopped doing what we were supposed to. We stopped believing in Him. We stopped, we started going to idols. We started going to the Queen of Heaven. All right, we started going to Tammuz. We started going to Jesus. We started going to, uh, 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 just all types of fucking BS, y'all. We went to everything that we were supposed to. So the Heavenly Father said, okay, I'm not going to work with y'all anymore. I'm not going to let angels come and defend you in battles like I did with Judas Maccabeus. I'm not going to let the ground open up before you and swallow up your enemies like Moses. I'm not going to let you shout like Joshua and knock walls down with your very words. All right, I'm not going to take you by the hair like Habakkuk to feed you like Daniel. All right. You know, so hey. Hey, that one scripture though, uh, I will work a work in your eyes. Uh, was it, uh, will it shall, shall it be marvelous in your times? Also dealing with the Israelite foreigners, the fact that you're going to have Israelites coming back to the heritage that don't look like Israelites. All right. So we got to believe and understand that as well. That's also another key thing that we have to accept and acknowledge, right? Among many things, you know, so that's about it. I'm going to give all praises to you. Hashem Hashem Demolish to the elders and apostles, great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim. Walk, walk, and learning, teaching the truth and sincerity. And I'm going to say Shalom.